If you're just starting your adoption, you likely have many questions. The first of which is likely what is an adoption match and how do you actually adopt? And what are consultants and agencies and attorneys and what do they all have to do with the adoption process? And can I even self-match my own adoption? Don't worry, friend. I've totally got your back. I will give you an overview of each different type of adoption and the types of matching that you can pursue in your adoption journey. And I'm going to walk you through an exercise to help you choose which version is right for you. In case we haven't met yet, my name is Amanda and I'm an adoptive mom of two on a mission to make your adoption easier, faster, and more affordable. Each week, I'm going to release videos that help you in your adoption journey. I'm always going to have your back with the step-by-step -step process. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click the icon below and ring the little bell so that you get notified each and every time I release a new video. Today, I'm going to walk you through the five different types of adoption, what some people also call types of matching your adoption. And I'm going to walk you through some key information about each one that will help you make your decision about which type is appropriate for you. And I'm going to give you a sneak peek into an exercise that I do with my clients to help them choose what's the right type of adoption for them. So grab a pad and paper, because if you're just starting your journey, today's episode is going to be jam packed in everything that you need to help you get started. And I know you're going to find it incredibly valuable. So let's dive right in. There are five types of adoption and in each type, I'm going to break down some key information. So first let's talk about what are the different types of adoption. The first would be foster care. The second would be private agency. The third private attorney, the fourth consultant, the fifth is self matching. And I'm going to throw in a little bonus for you to explain what an adoption coach is, because you might be wondering that as well. Okay. So then let's go back and break down each of these five and our bonus, um, under the idea of time, cost requirements and contact after finalization. So let's start with type number one or option number one, if you will, foster care adoption. So from a foster care adoption perspective, let's start with a basic definition just to make sure we're on the same page. Foster care adoption means that you are adopting a child that is legally available for adoption from the foster care system. Each state is going to have, again, different set of requirements as they do for every type of adoption, by the way. There's no like federal requirements or mandates that govern the adoption process, which is what makes it so tricky for us. And that especially holds true in the foster care system. And each individual case is going to vary as well. Um, in the state that I live in, in Arkansas, it is not common for you to be able to adopt a newborn that you have not fostered before you try to adopt. And so some states actually require you to be foster parents. Um, and the whole goal, again, of the foster system is reunification, right? They're wanting to reunify this child with their biological parents once the biological parents meet a certain set of criteria. From a time perspective, this makes this measurement, if you will, of foster care uh, adoption incredibly difficult to define because each case is going to be you know separate and different so in arkansas for instance again you might uh, you have to become a foster parent before you can adopt and it is typically on average a five-year process for a, um, a biological parent to either complete the steps that are required to become, you know, a, a parent again, or to legally parent this child again, not to become a parent, but to legally parent this child again. Um, so it's not common that you can actually adopt a newborn in the state of Arkansas through foster care. So again, the time factor is a little ambiguous here because foster care is different from a dynamic perspective. From a cost perspective, foster care, aside from caring for the child, so you have to take kind 
kind of that aspect out of the budget, if you will, is anywhere from free to about $5,000. It's typically about $5,000 to hire an attorney just to finalize the paperwork of an adoption. And typically those are the only charges. Occasionally it will become free to adopt if the paperwork has already been um, started and completed, or if you know you can do some of the paperwork yourself. Again, I highly suggest you have an attorney though. Requirements from foster care, most states do require you to be a foster parent before you can actually adopt a child and to become a foster parent. There are typically things like classes um, beyond just like CPR and basic first aid. You also have to go through like uh, grief and trauma counseling and things of that to be able to, you know, equip this child to process what they might have encountered in their life. And then from a contact perspective for, on the foster care side of things, foster care is a little bit different because um, you're typically not going to have contact. Occasionally there will be court made, mandated contact um, and occasionally you are able to work out a contact arrangement with um, expected or excuse me, with the biological parents. Um, but that is really going to be on a case by case basis. So there you go, kind of overview of foster care. Next, let's move into agency. So agency, attorney, and consultant are going to be pretty similar. So I will hit them kind of each on their um, in depth on from a highlight perspective of how that one particular one uh, type works. So from an agency perspective, let's talk about first time. Um, typically, most families, about 60% of families are going to adopt within one year, according to adoptafamilies.com. It is really hard to find actual like industry statistics since there is no like official governing body for the adoption industry that really releases a ton of industry statistics. The last government industry statistics that have been released uh, is actually several years old now. So it is difficult to find um, stats, just so you know. Um, next, from a cost perspective, cost on um, private adoptions through an agency. This is where people really get a lot um, kind of hung up. So the average is about $40,000. However, um, when you ask most families in, especially in the social media sphere, what they have spent uh, typically will range between 50 and $70,000. So again, 40 is an average, right? Um, but it is possible uh, to adopt with an agency and it costs a lot more and a lot less. The next from a requirements perspective, the requirements for attorney, agency, and consultant are going to be pretty similar, and they're all going to be governed by the state law in which you live. But the basic requirements are that you have a home study, that you are home study approved, and that you then meet the specific agency or partner requirements from there. Some require you to have um, a body mass index of a certain number. Some require you to be a certain religion or um, ethnicity or um, sexual orientation. There are a bunch of different requirements um, as it relates to kind of beyond the legal requirements that an agency might require. And so it is important that you do your due diligence when you're interviewing agencies to ensure that you're a good fit from each other. From that perspective, you want to make sure that your ideals and values of your family align to your agency's ideals and values and um, kind of a whole host of other things. And I walk you through that in another video. Um, but it is important that you understand it is um, that you do your due diligence on the front side to make sure you've got the, the right requirements, check boxes for both you and for them. The next contact after finalization, this is going to be a highly individual decision, no matter which type of adoption you are pursuing, you can set forth your preferences and criteria, but ultimately this is a negotiation or a conversation or however you want to label it with the expected family. Uh, my urge to you would be to do research about this and about the long-term effects on the child, because ultimately that's what really matters here. Again, I will always, um, you know, counsel you to put the child first and think through what's right for the child. Um, and then making sure that you are in alignment and feeling that you can fulfill and deliver what that child needs. This is not about you. Um, this is uh, counseling that we went through during our own adoption journey. It's important that you understand what's important for this child and deliver upon that. 
All right, option number three, very similar to an agency. So I'll hit the highlights. You're going to see slightly less cost with adopting through uh, an attorney, but you're going to see a slightly longer time period. So you're typically like on the low end of the scale, you're going to see anywhere from 15 to $20,000 if you're adopting with an attorney or they're finding an expected parent for you to match with. And it's typically, again, going to be somewhere in that year-ish range. One source said, again, 60% within a year. Another source um, said 75% within two years. So you you make your decision, friend, on what you think is appropriate there. Um, it really is, it just, you know, very highly depends upon the attorney and what type of regular, quote unquote, pool of expected parents that they might be matching within. Every attorney handles that a little bit different. And I should say that this type from an attorney perspective is separate from self-matching, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, so this is specifically the attorney finding an expected parent for you to match with. Okay. Let's take just a quick break. As I know, this is a lot of content. I know that that is just three of the five types of adoption. So I would love to know what type of adoption are you considering pursuing or what type of matching are you considering pursuing? I'd love it if you would share that with me below this video. If you're listening to the podcast, share it with me uh, within the Facebook community. But either way, no matter where you're consuming this content, I really would appreciate it if you would take a minute to give a thumbs up, to give a like, like to leave a rating and review on the content because that helps me understand how I could be serving you better. So how I could be giving you better content, better step-by-step, -step, or just what types of content you're finding most valuable so that I can help you through your adoption process. Listen, I'm just an adoptive mom who wants to help make others' journeys easier, and I really do value your feedback, so I'd appreciate it if you'd share it with me. Okay, so now let's move on into option number four, which is consultant. So from an, um, an adoption consultant perspective, let me give you a high level overview of what an adoption consultant is, because that's a question that I get a lot. So an adoption consultant, their entire job is to represent you to multiple agencies, to multiple attorneys, to help make your adoption run faster. Now, I will say that there are no industry statistics that report on what faster is from a consultant perspective. Personally, through my clients that have used a consultant, I have not seen this be any faster for them than self-matching through an agency or through an attorney even. Um, it's just not worked out that way. Maybe that's just, you know, kind of um, a a smaller case study, if you will, because I've only had a couple of tens ish of people that have used a consultant through their adoption journey. But a consultant, they will get paid from you for representing you to all of these other agencies and attorneys and such. And then you will actually also be paying the attorney and the agency, et cetera, their corresponding fees as well. So this is an added layer on top but it can be of value to some. So if you are really concerned about time, it may be a route that you would be interested in. If you have a very specific um, set of criteria that you're looking for and you're not finding a good fit within an agency or an attorney when you do your initial interviews, then a consultant might be the right way for you to go. From a consultant on a budget perspective, the lowest end of the fees that I've seen from a consultant has been $5,000. The highest end of the fees that I've seen from a consultant was $20,000. That was again, just the adult, or excuse me, just the adoption consultant fees. Then on top of that, you have to add the agency fees or the attorney fees or both, depending upon which way the consultant is matching you, plus sometimes advertising fees, et cetera. So it is really important that when you go through your interview process of your potential partners, that you understand um, what the realities are there and that you're fully equipped to cover that. I'm not trying to suggest that you don't use a consultant. I just want to make sure that you are doing your due diligence to understand what really works best for you as a family. I'll talk more about that in just a minute. Next would be self-matching. So in self-matching, that means you are going out and in social media and real life, basically any way you can think of, you are sharing your profile and your family story so that you can find an expected family to match with. It is important to note 
that this is not legal in all states. I am not an attorney by any means, but I do have a resource for you over in the Facebook group. So in the Facebook group under the guide section, um, and again, that's the My Adoption Coach Facebook group. In the guide section, I have done the due diligence of pulling together resources and links where you can go and read for yourself the state law in each state as it relates to adoption. It covers everything from revocation and finalization, um, as well as self-matching and or advertising. And so you'll know what you can do um, from your state state law perspective. Again, I'm not an attorney. That's why you need an adoption attorney, but I am, you know, an educated individual and so are you. And so you can read this and interpret it for yourself and then gut check it with an attorney before you take any action so that you don't put yourself in jeopardy. So from a self-matching perspective, you're going to need an attorney anyway. So what I would suggest that you would do if this is the route that you're considering is I'd go and double check that in the guide section of the Facebook group. And then I would go and talk to an attorney. So from a self-matching perspective, Again, this is not a regulated portion of the industry and the industry as a whole is not regulated. And so therefore it's a little hard to find information as it relates to time, et cetera, you know, all of that. So I'll share with you um, three clients that recently all self-matched. Um, actually, I had three months in a row where I had clients that self-matched their adoptions and had their children born and finalized. And each one of them, they had been um, searching for a match for less than a year. Um, one actually was only three months. We worked on her profile together and, it, and she posted it a, a few different places, shared her story in a few different places, and they matched incredibly quickly. Um, and then the other two, one was in within six months, the other was right at a year. So I would say the year-ish kind of time frame and benchmark is a good, you know, kind of mental note, uh, even as it relates to self-matching versus an attorney. The difference is in self-matching is that the legwork is on you. So while you're removing a lot of the cost from this um, overall adoption process, because basically you're going to have the birth mother expenses or the expected family's expenses from, um, you know, hospital stay, prenatal, whatever's allowed and that you agree to, uh, you know, in your state, as well as your attorney fees. Those are going to be the only fees that you have. Now, I have had some clients that have also chosen to do Facebook and Instagram ads that I've helped them walk through, like, how do you set up a, a business account? How do you set up an ads manager? How do you run an effective um, you know, campaign? Because that's something I do for my day job, right? So I'm able to coach them through that. And in the one that matched really quickly, that actually was what I think helped them match because it was someone that had been actually exposed to their advertising, then found them in a group, and then ultimately chose to match with them. So those are going to be the expenses that you're going to have. You're going to have, you know, kind of the living and caring for expenses. You're going to have the legal expenses. And then if whether or not you choose to get education, help, advertise, et cetera, those types of things. Um, most of my um, clients that have matched, self-matched though, have still matched for less than $10,000. Um, you know, again, kind of with the bogey being the expenses um, from a medical perspective, right? Um, but all of the three of them have actually matched in less than $10,000 and one of them matched for a little less than $5,000. So um, the cost is an incredible benefit of self-matching, but the, you know, the downside, if you will, is that it's your time and legwork, but with some due diligence, with some support and help, it is totally possible. Okay. Um, so the last type of matching, it's actually not a type of matching. It's just your bonus, if you will, is an adoption coach. What do I do? Um, I actually don't match you with expectant parents. I help you market, advertise, and then support you emotionally through your journey of adoption. Uh, I have a lot of expected parents that reach out to me all the time and ask me to adopt their child. Our family, and while I'm incredibly grateful for that, our family is full, we are complete. Um, but I often refer them to my clients if they're a good fit. And if they're not a good fit for each other, then I refer them to the other Facebook groups um, that help people match because that is that's not my jam. My jam is to support the uh, hopeful adoptive families become adoptive families. That's what I wanted during my own adoption journey is I needed somebody that I could talk to, that I could bounce things off, that had been there, that understood how to create a profile, that understood if we could advertise things of that nature. 
nobody existed like that. So that's the reason why I created this. I have a full-time day job <laughs> that I work and absolutely adore and love. And I have two beautiful children that I spoil completely rotten. And I do this for fun because it fills my heart and makes me happy. So uh, that's your bonus on what is an adoption coach. Okay, so if you would like the exact steps on how to adopt a child and the exact steps of how to adopt specifically on each of these different types of adoption or ways to match, I have a course that I walk you through that step by step. And you can learn more about that where you're watching this video or listening to this podcast in the show notes. And I would really love uh, for you to jump into that because I know it's going to help you. I get a lot of people that are just like, you know, I'm really confused, but I don't want to post in social media and I don't know what to do. And this is private 100% for you. It is videos on demand. It's exercises, PDFs that you walk through. And then you have me in your pocket to answer questions as you move through your process. So I know this will you will find a lot of value in this because I hope you found a lot of value in today's conversation. Um, and I trust that you did. And if you did, I sure would love it if you would consider joining us in the course, if you would consider joining us in the Facebook group, or most importantly, if you would just drop a rating and a review where you're consuming this content so that I know how to help you in the next phase. And if you want to learn more about the additional options as it relates to adoption, make sure you check out the other videos on this YouTube channel. Talk to you soon, friend.